red. All right, so, uh, well, we actually have something in astronomy called red giants, so I couldn't pass up talking about that. And I, when I pointed out these stars before, I mentioned Betelgeuse up here. Betelgeuse is a red giant star, all right? Now, Betelgeuse, I want you to uh, imagine this, is uh, significantly larger than our sun. Our sun is absolutely huge, okay? Um, when I talk about astronomy, I'll talk about the solar system, obviously. And somebody very correctly once pointed out that the solar system is basically the sun and a whole bunch of debris left over. Now, we live on one of those pieces of debris, but next to the sun, that's all the planets are, just little bits of leftover, leftover stuff. The sun is absolutely huge, but a red giant like Betelgeuse there is much, much bigger. It's in absolutely incredibly immense, and it's very, very red. So I just said that our sun is white. It only looks yellow in our sky. Here's a star that actually is very, very red. So here's my question. Why would this star actually be red? Why would it be a different color? Right. Well, here's your stove. You turn on the stove, it heats up, and the stove element turns red. OK, that's fine. The stove element is really, really hot. What would happen if you could make the stove element even hotter? what color would it turn? White. Uh, sure it would. If you could heat it up even more, it would start to turn white. And in fact, we can create all kinds of different temperatures and flames, right, and see them exhibit different colors. Well, it's exactly the same with stars, all right? As stars achieve different temperatures, which are shown here on the bottom scale, all right, they will turn different colors. This is called the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram and it shows temperatures of stars compared to the luminosity of the stars, and we can plot every star out there somewhere on this chart, and remarkably, they most of them make this nice straight line right here, and our sun is somewhere right around here. Okay, our sun, sun is, uh, is, well, no, our sun's somewhere over here, but what I'm talking about is stuff like this, stuff like giant stars, all right? And look, they're actually a lot cooler than our sun, and that's why they appear red, okay? If we turn the burner up, and it would become yellow, and then it would become white, like our sun, we could cool the sun down, it would be red like that. Here's a little size comparison, all right? The sun is a red giant star. The diameter of two AU. AU is an astronomical unit, and that's the distance from the Earth to the sun which is about 150 million kilometers, okay? 150 million kilometers. Well, that means that if you put a red giant star, star where our sun is, we'd actually be inside it. Right now, right here on the Earth, we'd be inside that star, okay? It would span the entire inner part of the solar system. Absolutely amazing. So, and like I said, you can go outside. You can go outside tonight and see one of these, all right? You go outside tonight, you face southwest as soon as it gets dark, and the constellation Orion is there. Orion is the ancient Greek hunter, all right? And he has a body, those are his shoulders, and that's his body, and that's his belt right there. And down below his belt, he has two knees, and there's a dagger hanging from his belt because he's a hunter. And up above is that, those three stars are his tiny little head. And uh, up there, his shoulder, that's the, gi the red giant star Betelgeuse. You can go out tonight and see that. And when you go out and look at it, try and see if you can actually tell that it is a reddish color. And that's because you're looking at a red giant star. All right, well, red giants are all good but we have stars that have another color in their name, of course, and those are black holes. And I'd love to be able to show you a really cool picture of a black hole, but I can't, because they're black. So instead, I'm gonna talk about baseball. And uh, I'm gonna talk about baseball for a moment, and I need to throw a ball to illustrate this, because, of course, there's two simple rules, right? Rule one is everything has mass. Right? I have mass, you have mass, the stage has mass, the pen that you have in your hand has mass, the earth has mass, the sun has mass. Rule two, the more mass you have, the more gravity you have. 
So you have more gravity than your pen, the Earth has more gravity than you, the Sun has more gravity than the Earth because it's more massive. All right, fantastic. So if you have gravity, it attracts other objects, and that means that the Earth will attract the ball. So if I throw the ball up into the air and catch it, all right, and catch it, it's because it comes back to my glove because, of course, the Earth's gravity slows it, stops it, and pulls it back down to the ground. If I put more energy into the ball, I can get it to go much, much higher, but eventually still comes down and lands in the glove. If I were an absolutely top-notch, world-class pitcher, I could still only throw the ball so high before it stopped, came back down, and fell into the glove again. In order to get it to go up and not come back, you have to achieve what's called escape velocity, a speed that will, is strong enough to overcome the Earth's gravity. Escape velocity here on the surface of the Earth is somewhere around 12 kilometers a second. So if I could actually throw the ball 12 kilometers in the first second, it would go and go and go and never come back. And of course, I can't do that, nobody can. But can we build a machine that can do that? And the answer to that, of course, is yes. We have built machines that do that, that uh, have that much energy in them, and they've been able to take us off the Earth and travel out to other places, go to the moon, where we can walk on the moon, leave footsteps on the moon, and I think that's absolutely awesome. So what does all this have to do with black holes? Well, remember our big stars here, okay? Our sun has a certain amount of gravity, right? It's bigger than the Earth, so it has more gravity. A giant star like that red giant star has even more gravity. Well, what if you had, okay, so now to escape the, the, uh, the, the, a star like that, you need to move not just kilometers a second, hundreds of kilometers a second, thousands of kilometers a second. What if you had a star that was so big that you had to travel hundreds of thousands of kilometers a second to escape it? That's what a black hole is, all right? A black hole all right, is a star whose escape velocity is over 300,000 kilometers a second. 300,000 kilometers a second is the speed of light. So what you imagine is, well, instead of a baseball, you imagine that you have something like a laser pointer, and you point the laser straight up, and the light goes up, and it hits the ceiling, fantastic. But if I were at a black hole and pointed the laser straight up, the light would come out of the laser, go up, but it wouldn't be moving fast enough to escape the gravity of the star. And so it would go up and up and up, but just like the baseball, gravity would slow it, stop it, and the light from the laser beam would fall back down to the surface of the star. Now, if you were just standing just beyond that, if you were just beyond the edge of where the light stops and turns around and falls back down because of the gravity, what would you see? Black, exactly. You wouldn't see anything because the light would travel to you, it would not quite get to you, it would stop and fall back down to the ground, all right? Back down to the surface of the star. And so, of course, you would see nothing. You'd be standing right in front of a star, right in front of a star that's burning and blazing and putting out all of this energy, and you would see nothing. It would appear absolutely black. And there's stars like that out there, all right? And of course, very obviously, we call them what we call them because, of course, things can go in, but they don't come out. So they're black holes. And um, we have stars. This is actually a picture, a real picture, of a neutron star, which isn't quite a black hole, all right? But it is a star where the gravitational force is so intense that the surface is flat and smooth like a billiard ball. If you were there, well, of course, you'd be fried to a crisp, but if you were there, you would be flattened, thinner than a piece of paper, all right, because the gravity would just squash you, all right, and that's not even a black hole. But I can get a picture of that, at least it shows up. We can make illustrations of what a black hole would look like, and of course, uh, it only shows up in this drawing because we've shown a bunch of other material falling into it. And that actually happens because out there, there are things called binary stars. We live in a solar system where we have one sun and our Earth goes around the one sun. But there's places where there are two suns, two uh, stars going around each other. Do you remember Star Wars, right? 
and I'm talking the original Star Wars, none of this uh, prequel trilogy stuff, I'm talking the original Star Wars, and Luke comes out on Tatooine, and he comes up, and he's all unhappy because all his friends are going off to fight the evil Galactic Empire, and he stands there on the surface of Tatooine, and he looks out into space, and he looks at the sunset, except there isn't just a sunset, there's two sunsets, right? Two different stars uh, setting. There's places like that. There's lots of places like that out there. And if one of those stars wasn't just a normal star, if one of those stars was a black hole, we'd be able to see the black hole sucking in all the material from the other regular star. And we can actually see that. So we may not be able to see a black hole, but we can see stuff like that happening. So we know the black holes are out there. There's actually lots and lots of them.